life is art, art is life. The moment you decide, I want to make art, it's already, uh, you're entering a performative act. Uh, everything you do, everything revolves around art. His works can be seen in various art galleries in Europe, from Antwerp to Copenhagen. He earned the name of an artist, an art historian and a performer. Steve Sheppens then decided to explore new horizons and founded a new form of art called Art Performance. The Belgian artist came for the first time to Ukraine way back in 2007. Actually, I find it uh, very similar to Belgium. There is something also in the art specifically that, that the, the humor is very good. And this uh, feels very good to me. Uh, I feel very at home. He has been already known at many art platforms in Ukraine. Notably, in 2011 and in 2012, he took part in the art project Art Point in Donetsk. There was a plan to display industrial Donetsk from the different, namely artistic perspective. And now all fruits of his past labor have been destroyed. I haven't visited uh, since 2012 when the exhibition took place. Afterwards I, was, uh, I didn't go back to Donetsk. I just wrote about it because I heard that uh, Isolatia was um, actually became a real isolation center, so the, the Russian provocateurs they made it into a prison. They then destroyed all the in situ artworks, which were they were famous artworks, and, and, and it was all destroyed. So uh, during the war, with and this is very important, uh, with the they named it Entartete Kunst, just like the Nazis did in the 30s. Um, and Artet Kunst is degenerate art in German, yeah. The artist joined the Revolution of Dignity in 2014. He went out of his workshop to share barricades together with the Ukrainian people. The Ukrainian art scene is very interesting. It uh, was also very interesting during Euromaidan, for example, because then all the artists almost stopped working, didn't produce any physical artworks anymore. And everybody, including myself, was on the barricades fighting. There was some, some open university also where artists would give lectures. The artist recalls the time of the Revolution of Dignity with deep inspiration. According to him, that was the time when art was created right in the streets. They would not produce anything because there was no use to produce it or I, it, it felt wrong. You had to engage yourself as an artist politically more than engage in, in making a, a sculpture or something. The events of 2014 found their reflection in the later works of the artist. I sometimes use the, the Ukrainian colors. I use lots of references to, um, to Euromaidan also that influenced me. I thought actually the whole barricades were one big art sculpture uh, which you could cut out and put immediately into a museum. It was very artistic and creative, uh, the, whole, uh, the whole revolution. Um, for example, I make uh, Molotov cocktails, as if you would go to the supermarket buy a, in, instead of buy a case of beer, it's a case of Molotov cocktails. Although Steve Schappens is known mainly by his provocative installations and passion to art performances, he appreciates old classics and considers academic painting as the basis of genuine art. I have a very strong liaison with art history. I was 15 years old and I only knew the, the, the traditional older artist, antique art. And then on television I saw an exhibition of Mondrian, the painter who started making red, blue, yellow, primary colors. And I was so shocked about it that uh, this was a complete, complete contrast with, with the antique paintings and the Renaissance paintings and so on. And then I decided I wanted to be an artist actually. I 
Um, I have a master cum laude in painting. I got this at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Ghent, Belgium. And because I wanted to have a traditional education and painting is one of the oldest mediums, let's say. So. I mean, it's necessary to know one's history. Of course, to, to copy it literally is not interesting, I think. But to be influenced by it, uh, we all are, as artists, we have our baggage. I refer quite a lot to, to other artworks. Uh, one of my favorite artists is Filippo Brunileschi. He was a uh, pre-Renaissance architect, engineer, mathematician, who developed the linear perspective in painting. Steve also acts as a critic and an art historian, owing to his classical education. He devoted many of his articles to Ukraine. I worked a lot with, with uh, Ukrainian artists and I wrote, I introduced actually Ukraine in several art magazines because um, in Western Europe, like in Belgium or in Spain, there was nothing written about Eastern Europe. I'm actually planning to do my PhD on the Ukrainian art scene. So. And I worked also as a curator where I invited uh, several Ukrainian young artists in combination with some international um, American artists. Yeah, a, a very good combination and I made exhibitions with them. So I always involved the Ukrainian art scene because I found it so interesting. In addition to performances, the artist often refers to iconoplastics and creates conceptual works from a variety of materials. There are concrete or literal uh, sculptures which refer to some, uh, yeah, which have like, like a, a real form. It's not purely conceptual where it's just uh, Malevich uh, black square on white background. So there are very sensual because I work with lots of materials like belts or I use ceramics which is also very sensual. There is the concept, there is um, the idea about the material it should be but then it changes during the working process as well and well the, it's like this you change the, the object or you change the artwork but the artwork also changes you but the real finish is actually the onlooker, the visitor of the exhibition, who looks and put his or hers uh, impressions and thoughts into the artwork. Then only is it finished. Using different types of materials, the artist presented cooking as a form of art. As artists, we have our baggage. And then, um, I think it was my first a uh, cooking performance where I started looking for my own roots, my family's roots, in combination with art historical roots. There's lots of uh, cooking, there's lots of um, vegetables, fruits present in ancient pre-Renaissance painting and so on with the Naturmoord. At a certain moment I started to become more conscious about my, uh, my own history in combination with art history. I never knew my father. Uh, he was the chef de cuisine. Because he died when I was 18 months old, I started to look for him in my art. So at the same time as looking for the art historical references for my work, I looked for my own personal references and merged these two into cooking performances where I present a fusion cuisine. That can be a fusion cuisine, uh, most of the time it's, it's uh, based upon the place where it's taking, uh, the performance is taking place. In Ukraine the first uh, one was with uh, green borscht and waterzoi, which is a dish for my hometown. And I fusioned this as a result of one of such experiments, the artist made an extraordinary dessert that became a symbol of Ukrainian-Belgian friendship. Dinner in Musici, in the expanded, Musici Expanded History Project, where I worked together with, uh, with Aleftina Kakice, the Ukrainian artist. 
In the end of this performance, I presented my prototype for a new dessert. And this was a huge slab of chocolate with uh, burak inside. And it was very tasty. <laughs> Afterwards, uh, together with the ambassador of Belgium to Ukraine, uh, Luke Jacobs, we connected to the Belgian company who has his seat here in uh, Dependance in Odessa and to Lviv Handmade Chocolate. And we all together, we developed my concept into a, a beautiful praline, which is now presented by the embassy on every official occasion or reception or uh, party. Burak being the basic ingredient of Ukrainian cuisine. I'm also very fond of that. And chocolate being something, uh, an, an, an important export product from Belgium, and Belgium is famous for its chocolate. Ukraine wants to come to Europe. Belgium and Brussels is the heart of Europe. So the chocolate around the Burak makes it a, a, an artistic and political statement. During the time spent in Ukraine, the artist studied art objects of the capital and is going to publish a guidebook for visiting contemporary art objects in Kiev. First I write a um, city guide on the art scene, which has uh, historical essays in it, and then the most important art centers are galleries, venues, uh, museums. For the one who buys the guide, it, he can use it and, and discover the city through contemporary art. They make contemporary art visible. Uh, they start a discourse. Over 11 years of work, the artist has found his favorite places, which help him to renew a balance and find new preconditions for creativity. The Lover's Bridge in Mariinsky Park in Kyiv became one such nook for Steve Shepens. I chose this bridge. Um, because it's the lover's bridge, but um, in first degree it's a bridge. It connects two points. Um, for example, it could connect um, Belgium and Ukraine, or two persons, like it is here, where the lovers, they add uh, a lock to the bridge to solidify their love. And I think that's very symbolic also for art to solidify something. Love was for me important because my artwork that is based on the artwork of Robert Indiana, Love, um, the sculpture which is in New York and other cities um, has this font with the O tilted. And there's also Sergei Bratkov who made a similar work like that, which was Gorka, which also has to do with love and marriage. When the lovers or the, the married couple has to kiss, then everybody in the audience, they yell out Gorka, Gorka, Gorko. Steve Schappens firmly believes the link to customs may become a new source of inspiration for joint projects with the participation of Ukrainian and Belgian artists.